Welcome to Journey Church at Home. We're so glad you're with us today. We're excited to have you join with us as we just hear the word of the Lord, as we get to worship together in just a few moments. Listen, we want to ch chat with you. We want to connect with you today. There's a number of ways to do that. As you can see on our platform, we've provided some tools to make that very simple for you. We've got the notes tab, so you can pick up the notes and some questions, some discussion following the service today. You, you can also follow along in our Bible app there as well. And uh, please connect with us, say hi this morning. We just wanna connect with you and see how God is working in your life and pray for you as well. So please connect with us in just a few moments. We're gonna go into worship right now, but we're so glad you're here with us today.
continue in this attitude of worship today, I just want to bring something to you from the word of the Lord. And it's found in 1 Thessalonians as Paul was speaking here to a group of believers at the time. And it says this in 1 Thessalonians that we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We, faith, we remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for you. And we're so thankful that your tithing is going to support this ministry, especially at a time where we can reach out into a world all around us. You know, the, the message of the gospel is reaching places as far as the Congo, and I wanna thank you for that. And so if you're faithfully giving, continue to be faithful in your tithes. And if you're not, this is a great opportunity for you to, to start doing that today. We've tried to make this very simple, very easy for you. So there are options to give. My favorite is the text to give option, or you can just download our app. You can see right on our platform today, there's some giving options there for you. But I'm gonna implore you, please do what you can. Ask the Lord how you can serve this ministry, how you can reach out, because together, as we are isolated, we can reach more people together. I wanna to thank you. Let me just pray for you this morning. God, thank you for every individual that's here today. As we come together, as we provide this ministry for, world, for the world around us, God, we just ask that your will be done in and through us. I pray for every person here today that you would bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for your generosity. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Today we're beginning a new series called Exile. You know, we're not the first generation to face significant trials and tribulations in our lives. We're in fact not the first generation to be quarantined to our homes. In fact, most of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation has all kinds of stories in it about people who were under exile, who were facing major trials. And a lot of the Bible speaks to this uh, to our ability to be able to not only survive in exile, but to thrive in exile. And um, over this next couple of weeks, we wanna talk about what it means to be people who live under the goodness of God, even in the middle of exile. This morning, I wanna to speak to an issue that perhaps the 21st century has not done a lot of speaking to, and that's the issue of lament. I've been totally um, enraptured by the prophets over these last couple weeks because I think for the first time, at least in my history, I've read them with this newfound understanding of what people would have felt like reading them for the first time. The Book of Lamentations is a book that most of us just sort of uh, try to quickly get through. It feels so sad. I remember as a teenager when, you know, you got if you've got parents, if you've got teenagers in your house, you know about these moods, like the up and down. I'd read Lamentations and cry my eyes out. Um, not because I was particularly having lament, just because I was sad. And I think for a lot of us, in some ways we have uh, overlooked the book of Lamentations. But a couple of weeks ago, I was reading Lamentations and totally struck by Lamentations chapter one, how much it echoed um, our own day today. And so I wanna read a few verses from Lamentations chapter one. I would encourage you this week to spend some time reading Lamentations. It says this, how deserted lies the city, once so full of people. If that is not like for us today, I don't know what scripture is. How like a widow is she? who once was great among the nations. She who was queen among the provinces has now become a slave. Bitterly she weeps at night, tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one to comfort her. All of her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. After affliction and harsh labor, Judah has gone into exile. She dwells among the nations. She finds no resting place. All who pursue her have overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for nobody comes to her appointed festivals. All her gateways are desolate. Her priests groan, her young women grieve, and she is bitter in anguish. It is striking to me how relevant this book is to us. And um, if you been reading the news like I have been reading the news. Poor Dave, he 
gets all my articles all day long. But a couple of uh, last week sometime, there was um, an article in the Harvest, Harvard Business Review, and we're gonna put a link to this in the discussion questions this week, but it really talked about how uh, people are grieving at this time and how lots of us really do feel this unsettled feeling that we can't quite put our finger on. I mean, we're trying to say that this is a lovely time to reconnect with all of the crafts that we wanted to do and all the projects around our house. Some of you have hand washed things for the first time in a long time. Dave and I tried to paint our walls this week. I will tell you, we used moldy paint to paint our walls. So you could pray for our household because it is not smelling good right now. But the thing is, even after a week, uh, I, I'm starting to run out of projects that I need to do. And maybe you're feeling the same way too. Maybe you've been wearing the same pair of sweatpants for five days now and you are done with sweatpants. Um, I put on jeans today. I feel like kind of a human. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Uh, most of us, if we're really honest, there is this like this sort of feeling of like we've lost something and maybe we won't get that back. And there is a grieving and a lament in all of this. And I, I, I read that article and, and resonated with it. Many of you, as I've talked to you throughout the week, I realize that that's what a lot of us are feeling. And we're trying to keep our chin up. Um, but it's difficult. And so today, this morning, I, I want you to know that the Bible doesn't gloss over our hard times. The Bible doesn't just say to us, oh, well, keep it happy, chin up and be happy all the time. The Bible actually speaks to the deep lament that many of us are feeling right now. And I, so I, I do want to do a little bit of teaching about what biblical lament is and how do we engage in biblical lament. So lamentation is a prayer uh, for something coming out of deep pain. And uh, it's really, really common in the Bible. I've talked about this before, but it, it, it bears repeating that one third of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. I think sometimes when we think about the Psalms, we think of them being like beautiful, happy songs like, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And while those Psalms are in there, one third of the Psalms are like, David is having the worst quarantine day of his life and he is mad and wants to burn the world down. Basically, that's what it sounds like. In the book of Job, if you read the book of Job, there's so much lament in the book of Job and then the book of Lamentations, which actually is lament. But lament, biblical lament is much different than just being sad or grieving. It's uh, actually a prayer it's different than, it's uniquely Christian because it's, um, it's a crying out to God. And <clears throat> lament, so the difference between grieving and lament is this, is that lament turns us toward God when sorrow tempts us to run away from God. And so what we wanna do in this season is not pretend that everything is normal and everything's great and it's so great because I don't have to see any of my friends or any of the people that I love. We actually want to say, yeah, I'm feeling lament, but God, may that turn me towards you. Okay, so I think before we even begin the process of lament, we have to ask ourselves, what are the biblical purposes of lament? And um, this was a really helpful exercise for me to go through this week, and I'm, I'm praying that it will be a helpful exercise for you as well. The first thing we see is that lament realigns our priorities. So when I'm in a place of pain, I recognize that some of the things that I've been worried about, some of the things that have been keeping me up at night, uh, the fact that uh, my kid didn't make it on a basketball team or a soccer team, like they really don't matter anymore. Lament reorders our priorities and makes us see what's important. For some of us, that's the hard work we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Maybe for the first time in a long time, you sat down with your family and you had dinner and you talked with one another. You might have done a bit of screaming too. That's okay. You're still good parents. But I, I, some, for some of us, uh, I know our family's been doing extended times of worship. And I mean, if you've been on our Facebook Live, just a shout out to our prayer time on Wednesday night. If you haven't engaged in that, join with us. Maybe maybe uh, you're, you're not normally a part of our community. I want to encourage you to be part of our prayer times. You can just go on Facebook and look up Journey Church Calgary and you can find us on there. And you know, as well as I know, that, that our worship times are not perfect times because usually one of my children is doing headstands or something of that nature. However, we do have this chance to say what's important to us as people, what's important to you as, uh, as a person of, of God, as a child of God. So lament, reorient, so that feeling of um, 
things are not quite right, does have the uh, ability to reorient our priorities. And, and lament, really, the second thing is this, lament establishes the limits of our humanity. So by that, I mean this, we're in this crisis right now that we can do nothing about, nothing. And if you're a person like me that likes to fix things, you like to like get all your ducks in a row and like line them all up. A couple of weeks ago, or I guess maybe, I don't, time is irrelevant now, but days ago, I had watched the night, nightly news and they were given all the bad reports. And I, I don't normally feel nervous, but I turned off the TV and I said to Dave, like, I, I feel like creeping fear coming up in, and I, I felt like I couldn't even breathe. I felt so sad because I thought I knew that many of you had been getting texts and emails from many of you that were losing your jobs and you didn't know what to do. And, you know, some of the pressures that were on your family are now on your family in another kind of way. I just, I laid in our bed and I said to Dave, like, I, as a pastor, I feel like I can't fix anything. But I recognize that it's right here. It's right in this space that we actually come to the place of humility because we realize the limitations of our humanity. And this is where God says that he meets us. He has a hard time meeting people who are proud. He says, the, the scripture tells us that he opposes the proud, but he comes close to the broken. And so lament, when we're in a season of lament, it does give us this opportunity to say, God, I am at the end of myself. Help me. Uh, lament it doesn't also let us blame, but instead calls us to draw close to the Lord. Okay, so I think this is a this is a point of honesty. Whenever something goes wrong, I think all of us, uh, what we'd like to do first is blame other people. And and since I'm the only one here staring into this camera, I will admit it that this is what I do. When something goes wrong, the first thing I want to do is say like, whose fault was it? Not mine. But when you're in a season of lament, you realize like there's nobody to blame for all this going wrong. Like who can we blame a virus on besides a virus? I, I think we like to blame politicians and we like to say it's, but like in our, in our real honest moments, we recognize there's nobody to blame. And so we have to lean on the Lord. It forces us to lean on the Lord because as long as we're blaming someone else, we don't actually put our trust in the Lord because we're putting all of our energy into blaming other people. This might be a chance as you're in this season of lament to actually decide that you're not going to, maybe you've held grudges against people or you've had unforgiveness in your heart. Lament actually gives us this chance not to uh, blame other people, but to release people. And finally, uh, if we don't get to the place of lament, we don't actually get to the place of hope. So lament ultimately brings us hope. In our North American culture, we have been a culture free of lament for the most part. And in fact, I think that the two things, the fact that we've been free of lament has actually got us to the point of major anxiety. If you look at all the stats from psychologists around, or in psychiatrists, particularly in the West, you'll see that anxiety has increased, that depression has increased. And part of this, I believe, is because we haven't learned to lament properly. We haven't learned to grieve. And over this series, this, this um, period of time, I think we have an opportunity to grieve. So how do we engage in biblical lament? The first thing that we do, and we find this in the book of Lamentations, is we need to call out to God. Lamentations 2.19 says this, Arise, cry out in the night as the watches of the night begin. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint from hunger at every street corner. The, the idea that we actually have to pour out our heart to God is the heart cry of lamentations. And I wanna suggest that in this season that it's something that we have to learn to do as well. Some of you have protected your hearts, you have bifurcated your faith. So your faith is a faith of head knowledge. So you know all the theology and you know all the right things to say and you ostensibly know all the right things to believe. But you haven't, this, this scripture doesn't even resonate with you because you haven't learned how to pour out your heart like water to God. Maybe here in this day, you could learn to do that. You could ask the Lord out of the deep recesses of your heart that you would pour out your fear and pour out your insecurities before God. 
So we call out to God. The second thing we do is examine ourselves. And this is about stopping the human tendency to take a situation into our own, yeah, to blame everyone else, like I said before. And Lamentations 3, 40 and 41 says, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. We can all, now that we've all watched every Netflix program that was ever made and every weird YouTube show that you, do you know, I saw people like knitting like finger puppets this week. I saw people playing hide and go seek on you. There's a lot of weird stuff out there. But now that we're all at the end of it, and if you've watched Tiger King, I'm going to tell you right now, you are at the end of your road on Netflix. Stop now. Stop now. Okay. So, but like at the end of it, you watched all the shows there is to watch and now you're left with yourself. And this is an opportunity to engage in real biblical lament. We call out to the Lord. We examine ourselves. This is where the psalmist said, search me and try me and see if there be any wicked way in me. You know, in regular everyday life, we don't have a lot of chances to examine ourselves, do we? It's like something that we say, oh, I'm going to do that. It's like on your to-do list. It's like cleaning out your garage. I'm going to examine myself, maybe at communion. And then there's like 30 seconds at communion and you don't ever get to the deep stuff. I want to encourage you, maybe even on this Sunday, to make this a Sabbath day and say to the Lord, I'm going to just take an hour, put on some worship music, and you would ask God to search you and try you. This is part of lament. And then uh, the third thing we have to do is wait for him. Wait for God to come and rescue us. And this isn't much in our um, human psyche, is it? is particularly in the 21st century, not part of how we live our lives. But Lamentations 3, 22 through to 27 says this, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. This is an interesting phrase here. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. It's like usually one of those phrases that we go, that was a nice poem. <laughs> it's great scripture. But here's what it means. That while you have strength, you can wait. And although it is a bit of a yoke, the Lord is going to see you waiting for him. And the great news about the situation we're in right now is that we don't have a choice. We got to wait anyways. It's not like you can get up and do something else. You're not allowed to go anywhere. Stay at home, people. Uh, and so we wait for God. But waiting is not a passive, I will lay on the couch in my sweatpants in the fetal position until we can all get back to normal. Waiting is active. Waiting requires that we have ears to hear and eyes to see. Waiting requires that we're honest before God. Waiting requires that as we examine ourselves, as we allow the Holy Spirit to search us and try us, that we uh, confess things in our lives that only God can bring up. And this is what biblical lament is. And so uh, in your questions, you'll see in the notes at the bottom of the notes today that there are some discussion questions for you. I want to encourage you to discuss those as a family, as a and maybe if you don't have family sitting with you, we know that more than 25% of our church are, are single people. And so let, let me just speak to you for a moment. Use this time to maybe Zoom call somebody. Uh, some of you will discuss these questions in your small groups this week. But, but here's what I want all of us to do. I'd, I'd like all of us to follow the biblical pattern and write our own lament. There's something good about getting out on paper what it is that we're feeling. And moms and dads, you can maybe help your kids to do this. Maybe they don't write it down, but maybe they make a little video of it. I think the first thing that we're going to do is, number one, we're going to kind of tell our protests. We're going to tell God what's wrong. Tell him how you're feeling. God's not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid of your doubts. He's not even afraid of, of your anxiety or your fear. So your first part is to tell God what you're feeling. And, and the second part is petition. We're going to tell God what, what we're asking him to do about it. And the third part is praise. We need to express trust in God today based on his character, based on who we know he is. And when we do that, that becomes an expression 
a biblical lament. You know, Job uh, had one of the shortest laments in the, in the book of Job. He said, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. And I, and I think this, that might not be your prayer. You might not be going as far as Job. And you don't, you don't need to actually feel bad about that because there's lots of laments in the Bible that don't go that far. But this idea that we can say to God, whatever it is that comes, I'm going to trust you is really the basis for us getting free in this season. And I, I think in this time that God can redeem the time, teach us how to lament. Moms and dads, you can teach your children how to grieve and lament well. And I think God's honored by that. And I think our discipleship will grow in that and that we'll be more like Jesus. So this morning I wanna pray with you. Maybe you're here, maybe you're watching uh, for the very first time and you don't, like this is all new to you. You, you didn't know that God wanted to hear from you. I, I wanna encourage you today to take that first step to, towards God. His word tells us that if we'll come close to God, that he'll come close to us. And you don't have to go jump through any religious hoops, but you just have to say, God, here I am, here's my heart. And we're believing that in this season that many people are going to make decisions to begin a relationship with Jesus. And some of you are part of our community and you've invited friends to be part of our community in this season. That's amazing. We wanna encourage you to do that. Maybe some of you have been walking with God for some time, but if you're honest, you would say, yeah, I haven't engaged in lament very well. I've been trying to hold it all together. I want to encourage you and I want to pray for you in a moment that God would just uh, be able to help you to open up your heart and pour out your heart to him like water, like the like Lamentations tells us. So let's pray together. God, I really want to thank you for every person that's watching today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your presence is with us, that you are omnipresent to us, meaning that we don't have to be just physically present with each other, but you're with us even as we're gathering in this digital way. God, I pray for every family that's watching, for every person that's watching, that they would sense your presence in this moment. And God, I pray in Jesus' name that we would have the courage to pour our hearts out to you like water. I pray that you would come and meet us. Holy Spirit, would you examine our hearts? May we sense your presence moving in us and through us. And God, I pray that you would, you would just increase our discipleship in these days. May we know you more than we have before. May this be a season of growth. And God, ultimately, we want to tell you today that we trust you. That we know the end of the story is that you win. And ultimately, because you win, we win. And so we put our hand in yours. We grieve, God, but not as people of the world grieve. We grieve knowing that you ultimately hold our lives in your hands. And so we love you today, Jesus. I pray for my friends today that they would know your peace and that they would know your grace in this season. In Jesus' name. If you've today made a decision to follow Jesus, we just want to encourage you to use that platform. There's a little button that will come up and say, yeah, I've made a decision to follow Jesus. If you'd click on that button, we'd love to pray with you and help you in this journey and get some things into your hands so that you can continue growing in your walk with God. We want to welcome you to be part of our community at this time. And just truly, we, we really believe that the kingdom of God is flat. Nobody's better than anybody else. We're all on a journey together. And so we welcome you from every walk of life to begin to say yes to Jesus. And let's just see what he'll do in our lives over this season. Yeah, so we're so excited today. If you decided to, to follow Jesus, you've raised your hand there, please, we want to connect with you. We want you to know that we're here for you today. And so if we can pray with you, please, as you raise your hand today, just request a private prayer. We'd love someone to come and pray with you right here in this moment, whether you're in your living room, your library, your kitchen, wherever you are today, we want to connect with you. And we've made that very simple. There's, um, there's opportunities on our social media, Instagram, Facebook. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we're going to be on Facebook Live, just a time of prayer and just worship together. So please join us. We'd love to see you there. We're so happy to take this journey with you today. And so if you are uh, available and you want God to, to reach you today, we want that to take place. Listen, 
Uh, just finally today, I want you to know that we so miss you. We so miss giving you the high fives, whatever it is we do on a Sunday, but uh, we know we can still connect with you today. So please say hello. We'd love to chat with you. We still have the chat room open for another 25 minutes following our service, but God bless you. We're looking forward to seeing you next week. Have an amazing week. Bye for now.